Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Roberto Corona. I am an Italian anthroposopher and astrologer and in this video we're going to talk about the next new moon in Virgo taking place on September 15. Now, as always, as you can see, I like to start with the image of Archangel Uriel. Uh, this is a painting of him. However, this is the last time that we are going to see this picture because as you can see, we have reached the last third of summer, Virgo season. We are in the middle of it. And so from the next Sigisi, we're going to switch to uh, Autumn and Archangel Michael. Uh, before starting, I'd like to remind you that I have launched my astrology courses, which are going to start in early October. So if you're interested in learning astrology, I leave you in the description box down below the link to the presentation video where you will find all the information. So let's talk about now um, about the last changes in the sky. So this is the chart of the Sigisi. As you can see, it features uh, Mars in Libra. So Mars has entered Libra and it is going to activate issues involving justice. Now, the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus up here is still ongoing. And it is now separating due to the fact that Jupiter has turned retrograde since September 4. And September 4 is a very interesting date because that day Venus turned direct uh, again. So um, Venus and Jupiter are in this chart making a square. And this is the third square uh, of the whole Venus retrograde process. So if you are interested in it, you can watch my video about uh, Venus retrograde in Leo. And speaking about retrogrades, we have Mercury here that is in a very special um, state. And this is because Mercury is still retrograde, but really is stationing in this chart, meaning that it is basically stopping in the sky. It is stationing. And uh, the correspondences between the Sigisi and uh, overall the Mercury retrograde process are uh, very fascinating because the Sigisi is taking place in the same degree that Mercury stationed the first, the first time. And there are uh, other uh, correspondences that you're, we're going to tackle by looking at the chart. So before moving on, this is a new moon and it is a very important new moon because it prepares us for the festival of Archangel Michael, which is taking place on September 29. Now, this is the date of the next full moon meaning that this Sigisi is going to be fully manifested right on Michaelmas. This means that we can approach this festival using the Sigisi as the beginning of this process. And September 29, this date is held uh, dearly by all anthroposophers since it is the festival of courage, it is the festival of the light, light that triumphs over the darkness of the Romanic dragon. It is a festival that it is celebrating the spiritualization of the human being. And it is so important because it is the opposite, the complementary process compared to the spring festival, which is Easter in which instead we have the spirit that materializes in the figure of Christ. So we have the Logos made flesh, but during uh, Michaelmas, the opposite takes place. We don't have divinity as the, the protagonist. We have uh, human beings and we have flesh made Logos. So we have flesh spiritualized into uh, something uh, new which is uh, the, the human spirit. So for this reason, we can take this Sigisi as the starting process that can allow us to prepare to get ready for Michaelmas. This is, of course, a new moon, meaning that it represents the beginning of the process of manifestation of these etheric forces that are gradually approaching the Earth sphere. So as the waxing moon turns slowly in the full moon, you can really picture this manifestation taking place, right? And uh, gradually, all that has to be accomplished in the physical world uh, grows and gets fully matured. 
And for this reason, the new moon can be seen as uh, the cosmic seed, the beginning of the manifestation process. So it is a good time to sow to get things started. And this is definitely the case because this is a new moon in Virgo, right? This process of manifestation will reach its culmination with the full moon in Aries, which interestingly enough is the zodiac sign of the warrior. And this full moon is going to happen during Michaelmas. And Michael is a warrior figure. And this is why this fits so nicely, so perfectly, I would say, with these two weeks that we can really use to get ready for this festival where the light triumphs over the darkness. So the Sigis is here is located at 2158 degrees Virgo and occurs in close conjunction with the star the Nebula, the tail of Leo, of the lion. While the last new moon, uh, that was a month ago, occurred in the image of the lion's head, this is taking place in the image of the lion's tail. And does this star remind you of anything? Because it is the star on which Mercury stopped during its first stationing. And this means that the Sigisi is basically taking a snapshot during the second stationing of Mercury. So this is what makes the Sigisi special because again, there's such a strong connection to Mercury here. On top of that, we can see that the Sigis is in opposition to Neptune in Pisces. Here we go. We have this is the first uh, opposition. And the ruler of the Sigis, Mercury, not only it is stationing, but it is making a, uh, an opposition to Saturn as well. Now, another correspondence between the Sigis and Mercury retrograde is this. As you can see from this degree, Sun and Moon are making a trine uh, with Uranus and the same was happening, of course, to Mercury because it was sitting on the very same degree, right? Uranus is a 2257 Taurus and Mercury was performing this trine, at least the peak of this trine was on the 23rd. So we have this, the, these two oppositions. We're going to talk about them, exploring together the meanings of uh, this Sigisi. So let's start from the physical meaning, the more practical meaning. This is a new moon, therefore it is based on doing, on uh, taking action. And this is even more the case because it is in Virgo. And Virgo is an earth sign that tends to work a lot. And we feel that, right? We feel this energy in September because the wheel starts spinning again and everything starts moving again. And we can feel it because um, we start new projects. We can feel this is the right moment to do it, right? However, I would say that this taking action is a little disorganized, if not downright chaotic. Why? Why am I saying this? Because we have these two oppositions. We have this trine with Uranus. So let's take a look at this. So we have uh, Virgo, of course. Um, it is a very accurate and planned out sign. But this CGZ is, we can say, um, it's in a hurry, so to speak, because um, it, is, it is in a hurry to get things done. And this is due to the trine with Uranus, which is still in conjunction with Jupiter. And Jupiter, of course, expands everything it touches. And for this reason, we have this haste brought uh, by uh, Uranus. And not only that, we have another component, the opposition with Neptune. And this oppos opposition is all about chaos. Because of course, um, Neptune in Pisces is very fruitful when it comes to creativity, right? But not at all when it comes to planning or organizing. And this means that we are asked to learn to navigate by sight, to adapt to the situation that will come our way because here we, uh, we are in a hurry and things are not as stable as we, uh, we want them to be. Now, I remind you that the star de Nebula, the tale of Leo, can be problematic because according to Ptolemy, this star comes with the nature of Venus and Saturn. 
Now, the nature of Venus of the star rewards the creative aspect. Uh, and in this regard, we can look at the opposition with Neptune, right? But on the other, of course, the nature of Saturn exposes us to real disasters because this star can be quite problematic. And what's confirming that? Mercury, which is the ruler of the Sigisi, is stationing. Uh, and on top of that is making an opposition with Saturn in Pisces. Now, this means that Mercury freezes because he doesn't know what to do, how to move on. And this is even more the case because Mercury had completed its first stationing again on the nebula. And the second stationing of Mercury is happening with the Sigis in conjunction again to the nebula. So we have this connection with the very beginning of the Mercury retrograde process. And the CGZ is basically reaffirming that it is um, really similar, right? So we have this connection in particular with the hindrance, the difficulties that we faced in the last week of August. So you can think back um, about this this week in particular, when Mercury was on the nebula. So on the positive side, this issues brought brought about by the nebula should find a solution here. Why is that? Because Mercury is turning direct again. So he wants out of the situation. He wants to move on. And the opposition with Saturn is separating, meaning that Saturn is at two degrees Pisces, Mercury at eight degrees Virgo. So Mercury is stopping, preventing this opposition to perfect. Okay. So this is the, the good news. The good part is that we are going to face something similar, something that we already know from the last week of, of August, I would say. But this time we're going to, um, to find a solution for good. Now, on a more soul psychological level, Uranus's haste can become anxiety. So be careful about it because haste is not the good, uh, a good advisor in this regard. While the chaos brought about by Neptune can make us very, very emotional. So when it comes to Saturn's opposition, this opposition is the main hindrance here. Uh, it can be an internal kind of uh, hindrance, uh, a blockage that is basically represented by Saturn in Pisces that is a configuration involving a water sign. So it is talking about emotions. And when it comes to Saturn in Pisces, um, we can talk about disillusionment and uh, being disenchanted. So uh, we can go too far with this process. So being too much um, disillusioned, too much um, realistic or pessimistic, we can really uh, prevent our projects to, to move on, right? So the question at this point uh, that we can ask ourselves could be, how can I be more realistic without being blocked by an excess of pessimism, if that makes sense. So we also have to learn to keep alive the torch, the flame of trust, because that allows us to realize our projects, to move on with them. Otherwise, this Saturn might prevent us from completing them. On a spiritual level, we have, of course, the preparation to Michaelmas, but in astrosophy in particular, the constellation of Leo uh, is all about uh, humanity reaching out for the forces of the heart. And, but this time, these forces are, are conveyed by the sign of Virgo. And on top of that, the virtue of the Virgin that is described by Steiner is courtesy, which becomes steadiness of feeling. Now, I don't like this translation because in Italian we have another translation. So I checked the, um, the German and a better translation for the virtue of the zodiac sign of Virgo would be courtesy, which becomes uh, sensitivity of heart. 
So here we have the forces of the heart, not only in the virtue, but also because the sujasi is happening in the starry image of the lion, which is the bearer of the forces of the heart. And here the forces of Virgo are basically putting us at the service of others. And this is done in the name of this ideal, the ideal of the heart, which here takes the form of a specific ideal, which is that of brotherhood. Now, in other words, whenever we work, we are always at the service of others. So whether we recognize it or not, whenever we work, we are always expressing forces of brotherhood because we are serving others. So spiritually here, let's remember all the good that our projects, our work can bring to others. So let's move away from a short-sighted perspective of work understood in a very selfish way, linked solely to profit and money. So we allow the ideal of brotherhood here and the sensitivity of the heart to connect us to others through service. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell not to miss out on future astrological insights. And if, if you are interested in learning astrology, click on the link in the description box for the presentation video of my courses. I am Roberto Corona. See you in the next video.